Thanks. In other words, I'm, I'm not going to be in the opening shot until we get to my close-up. <laughs> That's what I really mean. Ooh. Hi, Patrick. Hi. It's nice to meet nice you. Nice fellow Irish oh, person. Oh, boy. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Okay. Step by step. I was just telling you that I was prepared to say, okay, another sitcom, and then I watched it, and it was not only funny, but I get the sense it's very good. It's timely. I think so, too. I, we're not, uh, now, understand this, everybody, we're not trying to do a message show. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a comedy because we want to entertain people. We want people to, at the end of a half hour, to feel good and to want to come back. What it is about is a, about uh, blended families, uh, and borderline dysfunctional families, uh, the inability of, uh, of people to get along as they usually do on half-hour comedy shows. And there's a certain reality to it that I think is very valuable. And I think when people who come from those types of backgrounds see this show, they will feel better about themselves and their situation. You and Suzanne Summer seem to be such a great match as Frank and Carol. I mean, you're very funny, Frank. I'm a, frankly, I'm very a frankly, funny. Frankly, a very funny Frank. <laughs> Shirley, you're just. Footer. Don't call you Shirley. <laughs> you are. You're very funny. Did you, I mean... You love comedy? I love comedy. It doesn't, it doesn't always mean that you're good at it just because you love it. And if you're very witty and charming at home in your own shower, it doesn't mean <laughs> yeah. that when they turn on the camera it's going to come across. Yeah. And you never know these things. And I was more than nervous stepping into this. It was frightening, as a matter of fact. And had it not been for the fact that I love Suzanne so much and I feel so protected by her um, when you're out there going, ha, la, la, you know, and trying to be funny, that it might not have come across as, as it did. But we have a great relationship. And the kids are funny and good. Good and kids. Uh, so nice to have good children. I mean, children, children, real life children. It's so nice to have real, well adjusted, stable children on a television show. Your kids are lucky, you two boys, because they've had a stable relationship and home life. They've you and a, Carlin have been married how long? 20 years. That's kind of saying something in this business, isn't it? I think so. I mean, I don't know. It seems so natural for me. But whenever I tell people I've been married 20 years, I go, whoa, in Los Angeles, in movie land, in Babylonia. That's <laughs> what, kind of what this is. You, talk, you have to tell the story. It's the funniest thing. You, you grew up in Montana. Your folks own a pub. Right. What did you write to them oh, when you story. skipped to New York? Well, I, first of all, I, I had been out of the house for a while. But they always, I was, I'm the youngest. And you know, in a nice Irish family, the youngest can do no wrong, and mm -hmm. they gave me every leniency in the world. But I fell in love with my wife, and I won't tell you all the background because it was all in the letter. And I wrote home every once in a while, so I wrote a letter home to mom and dad from Seattle. I said, Dear mom and dad, I'm moving to New York because I'm going to live with a ballerina who's 10 years older than I am and already married. P.S. I'm a Buddhist. Love, Patrick. <laughs> ah, I heard these groans coming from Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Did they well, ever recover? I don't think they ever fully recovered. <laughs> They were always looking at her like, whoa, <laughs> what did you do? Oh, but she changed your life with Buddhism. She changed, uh, well, she changed my life. She changed my parents' life. Uh, it's one of those things. Um, we sit uh, many times and, and look at our life together and where we met. And I think, how could a, a boy from Montana, from a town of 600 people, at some point make the right causes that there was this girl who was born in Charleston and became a ballerina and traveled all over the world. Why did we meet in Seattle on a certain day and fall in love and get married? The odds of that time. And it's just because it was meant to be. You know, when you left Dallas and then you went back, you I don't know how much, how much Buddhism played into this, but you've said that you really resurrected and reformed your whole career by that move. Did you even know that at the time? No, absolutely serendipitous. I mean, it was just, uh, my, my lawyer even says, you are the best accidental entrepreneur I've ever met. <laughs> and it's true, because I don't plan anything. But it's very difficult to extract and separate my practice of Buddhism from my daily life now. It's, uh, I've been doing it too long. The same 20 years I've been married, I've been a practicing Buddhist. So I don't know what part it plays, so I have to assume it plays a part in everything. There's a little grosser. A man who's a grocer in this town, is he still your mentor, or, or do you still... Oh, the guy who gives me advice every once in a while? Yeah. I, I'd look to a lot of different people for that. There's no... The nice thing about the organization and the philosophy is there's no one particular person. You are your own best advisor. But a lot of times you need your temperature taken, you know? You need yeah. to have somebody look at you and go, you look pretty healthy, and that kind of thing. So 
he was the one who, when I le wanted to leave the show, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't being an, an egoist or anything else. And he just assured me that I was probably a very smart person, intuitively, and I, I should take pride in the fact that I can make my own decisions and do whatever I wanted, so I did. And it turned out to be the best. You know, everybody goes through times where they don't feel appreciated. I know that's what you, you say you went through in Dallas. How about now? You're feeling more appreciated? For who you are? The lack of appreciation was not an, a negative lack of appreciation. It was the inability to construct appreciation out of those circumstances. And by leaving and coming back, which was not on purpose, I became an appreciated person mm -hmm. in terms of the business perception of me as an actor. And that has never left. Good. That has never left. And, and the real indication of that is up until that time that I left, I think I had done one movie of the week out of the seven years, maybe two, uh, in my off time on, on Dallas. From the time I came back on Dallas, I did two movies of the week every hiatus, and I, and I was out of work two weeks, 14 days between the time the show was canceled and I signed to do Step by Step. Wow. So the whole perception of me as a, as a worthwhile person in terms of business mm -hmm. changed at that moment. Well, you certainly have learned a lot in your life. What do you want for your two sons, Porig and Connor? <laughs> Porig and Connor. The only person, obviously, who can say my children's name. <laughs> Everybody goes, Padre, Padre, <laughs> yeah. it's Porig, thank you. Yes. Um, I want for them to choose whatever it is they want to do and then allow me to help in whatever way I can. They both indicated they want to get into business in some form or another, which I think is great. Really? Oh, you don't sure. mind, huh? This, I have met nothing but nice people in this business. It's great. It's been wonderful to me. I'm, uh, I'm very appreciative of it. I think you are what you make of it. Mm. So I will help them. I told them I would get them their first jobs, which I can do because of my position in the industry. But then they're going to have to get the rest of them by themselves. Good. So um, they'll have to struggle, but I think they're talented. I think they're good people. they got good hearts. They're uh, respectful. And so far, they're still afraid of me. <laughs> um, and that's always that good. <laughs> so one is six foot one now, so it's a little tough. I'll make you a bet. That we're sitting here next year talking again about step by step. I hope so. Boy, I really think so. It really looks so much, like so much fun. I wish you the best of luck, Patrick. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Out of here. Out of here. No. D uh, David. David. Um, yeah. Oh, he's wonderful. Hang, hang on a second, okay. <laughs> I know, it's easy in that place. <laughs> Will you shut him up? Could you please shut him up? Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Where am I? Wait a second, I gotta think. What the hell did I say? Okay. <laughs> Want to change the tape? <laughs> okay. Uh, now I'm completely lost. Where did the hell did I start I with know, you? I started with you on. Ah, I know. You know, when I heard the title "Step by Step," I thought, okay, another sitcom. And then I watched the pilot, and this is good. It looks like you and Suzanne Summers have such a camaraderie. I'm supposed to look at you, Jim. Sorry. Let me do it again. You know, when I heard the title "Step by Step," I thought, okay, another sitcom. But I watched the pilot, and I really liked it. I've got this sense it's timely given what's going on in our country today with remarriages. You know, how much did Buddhism play? Um, when you left Dallas and you went back, you kind of really resurrected or realigned your whole career. Did Buddhism play a part in that? You have got to tell the audience the story of what you wrote your parents, your Irish parents from Montana, when you moved to New York with your wife. That's a tough word. Yes, they don't go together. <laughs> Can you think of another one? What do you want for your sons, Porig and Connor? <laughs> what do you take for your diarrhea? <laughs> okay, that's good. Thank you.